Hey, what's going on? Just figured I'd uh, do a little quick check in here. It's been a minute, uh, just been super busy. We've been on like two or three camping trips since the last video. And we got more coming up. So there's been not a whole bunch done to SARS 2.0 recently, but I did get uh, quite a few things done um, and kind of bolted up. So let's take a look. All right, as you can see, still being supported by the by the hoist, but uh, you know the rear's done. I mean, the rear's pretty much good to go. I didn't move the axle shock tabs mounts in yet, but my focus has been on the front three link, which is now pretty much done. All the link mounts are welded, set up. I still have to trim the upper truss link mount bracket down a little bit. I have the track bar, tie rod and drag link in place. The only thing not fully welded and done is the tie rod, or the drag link, sorry. Um, I had a stock Explorer Pitman arm, which is like, I don't know, like an inch and a half drop, maybe almost two inches. Um, and then my buddy Brad Kumler, Kumler said he had a pretty much a flat Pitman arm laying around in his garage. He's pretty sure it came from a full-size Bronco, which is, I'm not sure why it's flat, but this gave me so much more clearance so now I'm kind of playing with the idea, bottom or top of the high steer, it's basically gonna come down to whatever matches my track bar bracket angle. This is pretty close. Um, as far as the pivot points, from the center of the pivot point on the tie rod or drag link, to the pitman arm, to the track bar, is pretty much exactly the same distance. So my pivot points, I think are within a quarter inch of each other. And the angle, once I figure out what's gonna work out best, I can flip flop on the high steer arm. And then I have the bottom three holes pretty much to work with on the track bar bracket. So. Still gotta figure that out. Track bar is welded, everything's welded except for the drag link. And I did not weld the upper track bar bracket yet. I think I'm going to notch it, I don't know, three eighths or a half inch. Move it this way a tad. I'm gonna do full bump again, but I got enough clearance to move it back a tad and it would make it that much more straight. <clears throat> it's not bad, but if I can, straighter the better. So everything's sitting good. Um, everything's set up right now. I have seven degrees caster, which is good. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, the body's just floating on the frame right now. That's not bolted down. But we are getting there. Next on my list, like I said, is trim. I got like another 9 16 to trim off this to make this shorter. And then the factory K member, I want to reinforce and um, shrink it a tad. Not shrink it, but. Basically, I wanna bring this over, make it more of a box, which would give me more clearance here. And <clears throat> basically, if I can get another, another two inches of bump, it would be amazing. Uh, let's see, what else? So now that the front is pretty much all set up, centered, Center this way, the wheelbase is set. Next is going to be the shock towers. 
So that's next on the list. And then I found a place online, what was the name? I don't know, I was looking up, uh, <clears throat> what was I doing here? I was looking up <clears throat> uh, Hydro Boost setups and I just typed in uh, 91 Explorer, 9194 Explorer Hydro Boost and like the top one or two things popped up with a company that makes Hydro Boost for basically any application and then they actually had a uh, an Explorer part number which is also good for, I think they said 80 five or six up to 97 I don't remember for basically the Bronco 2 the Ranger Explorers so it's not cheap but I feel like it's going to give me the best brakes the best brakes for this setup I mean one ton axles with the one ton uh, brake calipers and rotors it's gonna take it's gonna take a lot of braking power to uh, to stop this, especially on the trail, you know, vertical descents going up on obstacles, you don't want to lose your brake power on that at all. So, kind of sucks because <clears throat> I already bought a brand new brake booster, and then some other forums guys are running a '99 Dodge 2500 um, master cylinder. And I know it's been quite a few write-ups on it, and it sounds like it works really well. But I don't, <clears throat> I don't think that was for one tons, but that was the best I could find at the time. So this stuff's coming back off. There's going to be a hydro boost, which is going to be better because it's going to give me a lot more clearance. So I'm going to have a hydro boost uh, booster, and then they're setting me up with basically a one-ton style master cylinder with an inch and a half bore which is supposed to be perfectly matched to these axles and brakes so that's going to be pretty awesome um, so that's been ordered I'll probably have that in two weeks so that's coming other than that like I said as soon as I can get the shock hoops on um, let's see so this side has pretty much already been plated all the way down to the body mount bracket. I'm going to do the same to the other side. <clears throat> and then I will start getting the hoop situated, which I have a, an idea on how that's going to work. So, like I said, I'm getting there. Still, I mean, it's a lot of work. But it's turning out awesome. This is not ride height. This is, uh, yeah, it's sitting up pretty high. The back wheels are on the ground. The front wheels are on rollers. That makes up like a three and a half, four inch difference there. But the uh, the goal is to, I'm going to run about five inches of shaft at ride height. <clears throat> so that will give me uh, five inches of bump and nine inches of droop. I'll start with that and uh, see how it goes. Like I said, I'm, I'm gonna be using these uh, Fox 2.5 air shocks for now. I'm, I'm still not 100% sure if it's gonna be exactly what I want, but like I mentioned before, I got them for a great price. I'm gonna run them, try them, um, get the truck done, finished, and then down the road, uh, if I want to go with the ORIs, I will, and hopefully by then it won't be a six to eight month uh, ordering window. So that's the update for right now. Truck's looking sweet. I just can't wait to have it on its own weight and over here parked so I can start uh, getting at it at all angles, get the inside going. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so once I can get this away from the hoist and be able to open up all the doors, I'll start doing stuff on the inside. Um, headliner is going to get obviously redone. Um, and then I will get all the shifters situated. Um, let's see. So nothing's been done, but need to get the 
shifter, which I have this, uh, what does it make, goat built shifter console kit that I already welded together. It's going to run my Winters Art Car uh, reverse manual shifter right here. And then, uh, I don't know where it's at, but I got the uh, cables and stuff for the twin stick set up for the Atlas. So hopefully everything's going to work and fit. The cables are... I'm going to give you a give you quite a bit of cable here and it's not really that long of a distance so I hope, uh, hope that's gonna work out uh, let's see what else oh I got my uh, from Silver Fox my complete Silver Fox built reverse manual valve body for the transmission that ended up taking uh, That ended up taking, he said it'd be about six weeks. It ended up being just over 11 weeks. Not a big deal. Um, everything right now in the industry is just wait, 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 wait. There's no parts. Stuff's going on. It's just crazy. But uh, I'm just glad I got a hold of, the, of, uh, of Dan at Silver Fox. And I'm super glad he got back to me and we worked this out. So it's going to be a full reverse manual valve body. Um, so it's going to be park, reverse, neutral, first, second, third. And then I forget his name and I will mention it, but there's another guy who's running the same transmission and reverse manual valve body. And basically he modified the shifter gate to slide over to the left of third gear spot and has a micro switch and sliding that over will basically turn on overdrive so fourth gear will be electronically controlled so when and if i do go on the highway or above 55 miles an hour for cruising i will not be you know when you know rpm and then it also will have a, another button or switch for the torque converter lockup so if I do, uh, you know, take a trip down, you know, the highway, hit overdrive, get set, get my speed set, and then hit torque rear lock up, and then just cruise, it's going to uh, be really nice. So it should ride really good. Uh, let's see. I'm still trying. I keep looking at me in the uh, screen, but the camera lens is over there. It's kind of hard to do that. So... All right, well, that's what's going on right now. Stuff's that's coming up. Hopefully, let's see. Hopefully, within two weeks, I will have the shock buckets uh, set up and this thing finally on its own weight. So I just got to plate the passenger frame first, get the shock towers, shocks in, and then uh, some finishing touches. And hopefully start assembling this thing in the next month. So, all right, that's your update. Again, sorry about the whole camera thing. I just can't get used to it. Uh, there will be more videos coming. I'm actually getting ready to head down to Brian Racy's house uh, with Gilligan. We are going down to Stillwell, Ohio. Um, uh, Amish country. But I've been there once before in some of my other videos. It's a privately owned property with, everyone says, the best wheeling in Ohio. There's rocks, there's hills, there's logs, there's everything. So stay tuned. I'm riding shotgun with uh, Brian and Gilligan. And then Brad and Kenzie in their B2 will also be with us. And it's one of our um, Glass City Crawler um, events only so it's only glass city crawlers this this time at stillwell which i think is the first time ever that they've done that so stay tuned we're gonna have some awesome footage of the club at stillwell uh gilligan and uh little beast so we'll see you guys uh, in the next video